All right, let's all gather in and grab our hymnals and stand and sing page number 124. 124. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment for the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All right, on the third verse this time. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing from the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Good to see you folks out with us this evening in the pouring rain. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's helping them maters that everybody got planted. It's a, it's a definitely getting it down out there, but uh, I'm glad it ain't the bad storm that they was looking at, so thank the Lord for that part. Amen. Amen. Lord knows what he's doing. I just leave the rain to him. Amen. Uh, all right, continue to pray. Um, we've got Brother Alan Barker will be with us starting Sunday. I thought I had another week on that, but we got Brother Barker will be with us Sunday. Alan Barker will be with us Sunday through Wednesday. And uh, just a little encouraging meeting, a little bit uh, to help us out. And uh, we had him scheduled back in March and had to cancel due to the virus and the stuff going on in the quarantine situation. But... Uh, He'll start with a Sunday and go through Wednesday. So if you can be here, if you can get some folks to come with you, you get them to come on. Of course, obey the guidelines and, and be careful on that part. But uh, uh, we're going to have some preaching uh, Sunday through Wednesday, Brother Alan Barker. So you can hear some good preaching. And we love Brother Barker. He is a real blessing. He'll give you something that will help you. And uh, 
he can even make you, he can even make you smile while you're mad. I don't know how he does that, but uh, he'll preach a hide off of you, and uh, you'll like it. He's a, he's, he's a super good guy. I'm just cutting up a little bit, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. I wish our situations was a little different than they are so more folks would come in. But uh, you tell whoever will and can to come on. We're going to be here. We'll wash our hands, and you can keep your distance. And uh, I guarantee you'll be a whole lot better off here than Walmart. Amen. 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 So if you can go to Lowe's and Walmart, you can go to church. Amen. Amen. Especially if you can go to a doctor's office, you can go to church. Amen. Uh, but uh, anyway. All right. Let me give a couple prayer requests. Uh, Brother Billy McNutt that used to come here some, he and his family actually years ago come. Uh, the Nolans, Miss Tina Nolan. Uh, she's got a different last name, and I don't even remember what it is right now. But Fry, Miss Tina had an episode yesterday. They were first feared of it being a heart attack. Um, she is went home this afternoon. She is in stable condition. She's gonna follow up with her doctor. Uh, they done all kinds of testings, and not real sure as of last time I talked to Billy. Uh, Brother Billy, last time I talked to him, they're not real sure what went on, uh, but they're working on it. They've got some ideas, this, that, and the other, but anyway, she'll follow up with her doctor and get some more uh, learnings on what maybe went on there and give her some help with it. But uh, they at first thought she was having a heart attack, and signs, symptoms, and pain all le led to that direction. But uh, after they've done a bunch of testing, they evidently don't did not conclude that she'd had a heart attack, so... She'll follow up with her doctor. Just pray pray all that goes well. And remember now, that's Miss Kathy that comes here, her sister. Uh, they've been here for years and hadn't been in a little while. But uh, just remember Miss Kathy and the family there, uh, Miss Tina. And remember their mother, Miss Joanne. We've been asking, asking prayer for Miss Joanne. Uh, so continue to remember Miss Joanne. Pray for her. Brother, Brother Mike Revis has got stuff going on, so remember to pray for him. Uh, and his medical work that they're doing, the testings and different things. So lift up Brother Mike uh, Revis. Um, let's see, remember Kelly and the babies, all that they have going on, and then the paperwork situation that we know about. Uh, pray all that gets finalized and everybody's happy about that real soon. Amen? Uh, any new requests, anything that I need to mention? Okay, all right. Miss Karen's got a friend that her the friend's daddy's not doing good. So uh, remember that God knows who it is. So just ask the Lord to help uh, Miss Karen's friend and the dad. All right. Anyone else got a request this evening? Unspoken, Brother Scott, Miss Miss K. Unspoken, Dennis, Angela. Anyone else got anything? You can't do that. I think you're trying to get my attention. You act like an auction, auction block, are we? Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's something else. Yes, sir. All right, yeah, remember Miss Sue and them? And then uh, pray for Brother Mike's got some other stuff on his heart. So remember that. Amen. Pray about our current situation. Don't, don't, don't get uh, comfortable with it. Just continue to pray about it, that the powers that be will do what's right. Amen. And all these issues that's going on, things will be done that's right. Uh, I don't know if you've watched or seen, there was another shooting or another uh, killing of a man uh, arrested by the police. It was, uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, I don't know the whole situation behind it, but what's, what's being aired does not look good on behalf of the, uh, the law enforcement uh, field. And uh, if it's what it appears, if everything is what it appears to be, then they ought to deal with that gentleman accordingly as they would any other criminal. Amen. Amen. I don't support any wrongful actions. Um, I got 11 years plus involved in law enforcement, been continually involved with them since I left. I still pray for them. I love them. I'd help them in any way I could, but I'd sure be the first one to stop any wrongful doing, and I have done so in the past. Um, that's why I sort of was a little bit of a lone wolf at times because I don't stand for none of that junk. Amen? Treat every man as a man. That's the way I looked at things. I don't care what color he is, where he come from. You treat him 
you treat him right. Amen? And I've dealt with them in all nationalities, all colors and creeds and cultures. And uh, you deal with all, all mankind equal. Amen. Amen. So pray about that situation. I know it's stern a mess again, and, and that particular kind of a mess, it don't take much to stir it. And uh, people get all, all out of whack over that, and, and some of it's justified. So just pray that all gets fixed. They'll deal with that uh, group of officers accordingly and uh, get that. I believe the gentleman's name was George. But uh, pray they get that, that all handled in a proper manner, the way it should be. Amen? Amen. Don't, don't just take what you see. Wait till they get all the evidence out there, but pray they handle it like it ought to be in a right way. And uh, I want them to handle it just like as if my own brother or my own kids. Do it right. Whatever it needs to be, do it right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anything else, any other requests we need to mention tonight before we pray? Yeah, Miss Gale's got some more lung tests going on there. Pray that all that comes back better than has been. Pray it does good for her. All right? Remember Miss Gale. Always remember pray for Brother Jack. Uh, remember Brother Jack Tucker and Miss Shirley. Lift them up in prayers. Amen. Give them a buzz when you can. Amen. I've tried to call around and talk with some of our folks. Talked with Brother Sam a little while yesterday. And uh, trying to call and talk with some folks. I tried to talk with a guy a little bit yesterday and today. Pray about that gentleman. I'm not going to mention his name uh, on the air tonight, but uh, God knows who he is. Pray that the Lord will lead in, in the chatter that we have there, the talk we have. So uh, God will help me and him too. Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request this evening before we pray? Yeah, please do remember Miss Nikki. Um, Miss Anita posted some pictures of Nikki's current situation, and it shows how severe and how bad it is, and it's it's bad. So uh, much prayer, much prayer is needed for that family and God's will. Uh, just pray God. All, I, all I'm praying, church, is God's will, his mercy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just pray in God's will and his mercy. All right, anyone else got a request this evening? Folks used to come. We still friends with Miss Deb Gussler. Remember her dad? He had to have some stents put in. I think he put in two stents in him. Uh, so pray for his condition. He's been going through some stuff. Um, they was from right inside the edge of Rowan County, and they came here many years ago for a good long while. And uh, we love that family. So much prayer needed for them. All right. Anyone else? Anything else come in there, Clarence? No? All right. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Father, we thank you for mercy and grace that you've extended to us again. We ask you again tonight, Father, would you please have mercy on us and forgive us and cleanse us and purge us and fill us with the Holy Ghost. Use us for your honor and your glory and help me tonight as we unfold thy word. Lord, help us to prepare our hearts for you, our service to you to worship and praise you as you so deserve. We pray for the upcoming meeting, Brother Barker, God in heaven. Give him just exactly what we need to hear here. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you touch my heart. Help me, Lord, that I'll be where I need to be and what I need to be for this church and this church family. I pray for each one here. Lord, I pray you bring in the folks. I know that, Lord, uh, there's fear of the quarantine stuff going on, and I just pray you'd have your will and deal with it accordingly. Lord, we pray for these requests here tonight, uh, many unspoken throughout the building. God, you know their needs, and we pray that, Lord, you'd be attentive to them. And then the special that's been sent in, Miss Gale, Miss Karen's friend, I pray that God should move and help there, and uh, Miss Tina and Brother David, uh, and their heart situations, what they've been working on there, I pray that God you'll help uh, the doctors to continually take good care of them, know what needs there, be with Miss Joanne. And then, Lord, just uh, bless others, Brother Jack uh, Leard, Brother Jack Tucker, Miss Shirley. Lord, I pray that you'd touch and help them meet their needs, Miss Gay, on her testing. I pray that the testing comes back uh, great. We pray for Brother Mike Revis, Lord, as he goes through uh, the testings and the procedures that's in front of him. I pray you'd watch over him and help him <clears throat> in a great way. 
And then, Lord, help us to come through this quarantine stuff and get back to, uh, Lord, at least a fair normal and be about the church business, be able to do things that we need to do. And, Lord, we'll thank you for that. You just bless us and help us. Give leadership, wisdom to those that's in power, those that's making decisions. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to make the right decisions and have your will and your way in things done. And, Lord, may we give you honor and the glory and the praise. Meet our needs tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go with me to the second Kings tonight for a few moments. I'll give you just a little bit of a thought to sort of help us. Second Kings chapter number 7, there's a story here that I want to read a little of and uh, try to uh, help us, uh, motivate us, stir our hearts a little bit. And uh, we must understand, yeah, we've got a different situation than what we've ever dealt with before, but it's not the first situation like it in the world ever. So we can, uh, we can overcome and we can go forward and we can get back to the business of the church. May the, may the Lord help us with that. Amen. We need to be much about that. And uh, I'm for safety. And if anybody cares about your health, I probably care as much as your doctor and your family does. Amen. Amen. I want you healthy. I want you feeling good. I want you able to, to enjoy life. That's my heart. And I pray for that. I pray the Lord give us that. Uh, and I wouldn't in any way uh, wrongfully try to put you in harm's way. Um, so we watch out for that here. But I, I do want us to be able to do uh, what we can. There's been more knowledge come out on this quarantine, uh, this virus. And uh, they've learned a lot of things that they were in error on in the beginning. So to do you well to study a little bit. Amen. Amen. Know and learn and listen uh, to what they're putting out there and uh, grow with it and go with it. Amen. Do what we can. We've got to go on and function as a church if this would be the end time pestilence. Are we going to hide from everything? Let's go to 2 Kings 7. Let me read to you a little story here. During the days of Elisha, the Bible says, then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord of then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eye, but thou shalt not eat thereof. For there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? For if we say, We will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we sit there, uh, sit, and sh and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of, the, of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went in 
into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's house, uh, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told him, saying, We came and told uh, to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voices of man, but horses tied and asses tied and the tents as they were. May the Lord add his blessings and help us uh, with this reading here tonight. All right, I want to deal with this thought just a little bit. Get a good picture of this. Uh, it's amazing what God can do. God made these Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and horses and a great host as if they were there, but they were not there. So you be aware of that. God can make you hear things sometimes that really ain't there. That works on good, and it works on the negative side as well. In this particular story, the Syrians were sitting outside the, the city there, and they had the, the king, if you will, at bay. He was uh, scared for life. There was a famine in the city, and uh, the city was going to starve to death. And the Syrians is going to sit out there and watch them starve to death and then overtake. As you look at this story unfolding, God let the Syrians hear the noise as if the horses and the chariots was coming against them. And uh, they fled. And you read this, they literally lit out as if somebody was on their heels right now. Because as the story reads, they didn't pick up nothing. They just jumped and ran with what they had in their hand, and away they went. Whatever clothes they had on, whatever they had in their hand, they went. They didn't stop pick up nothing. They just fled and left everything laying there. It said that their horses was tied and all the goods was left in the tents. So these four lepers come in and enjoy the stuff. And I want us to think about the phrase that they mentioned there in verse number 9 is, We do not well. And, and I want us to realize, in this story here, in verse number 4, they're hungered. They're starving. If they don't eat, they're going to die. And you listen to these guys as they chatter there. If we go in the city and die, we're going to die there. If there ain't no food, we don't get nothing, we're going to die there. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in into the Syrian camp and they choose to kill us, we're going to die there. Basically what they're saying we're going to die one way or the other. We just well try to get us some food. So the Lord put it in their heart for these leprous fellers to go down there and check out the camp of the Syrians. They didn't go in the city where there was no food. They already know there was a famine there. So you see the hungers there, verse 4. You see the hopelessness is there. Any way they, these guys go, they're going to die. But he says to them, they say one to another there in verse 4 and 5, why sit we here till we die? Why sit stagnant and do nothing and just die? If we're going to die, we're going to die. But we ought to be doing something. Why sit we here till we die, they say. So you see there's the hunger and the hopelessness. And then on the other hand, there's a, a host of Syrians. Well, the Syrians are their enemies, you see. The Syrians are there for the purpose of killing well, these leprous fellers, you think about this. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'd rather die in a battle than I would sit there and starve to death. Now, I don't know. You may choose to sit there and starve. But I'm going to take my chance. At least I got a chance in a battle doing something. If I'm going to just sit there and die... I'm gonna just, I ain't going to do that. I just ain't going to do that, folks. I just tell you, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die trying to win. Amen? Amen. God help us. 
God help us not just sit here till we die. Amen. We ought to be doing what we can while we can. Well, when you look at what happens here, these, these guys go down there, and they go in that camp, and they find all this good stuff. Now, I'm amazed. Really, I'm amazed when you look at what the Syrians has got in their camps, in their tents, and they're sitting there sort of in a battle array. Why would they have a bunch of gold and silver in the tent? I mean, I'm going to hide my gold and silver back at the house. If I'm going to battle, I don't want to take my gold and silver with me. But they did. And here they go. They go down there in battle, and they're sitting out there in their tents, and then, then they get scared to death, and they leave their gold and their raiments and all that. So they're, they're gone. Well, these guys gets it and finds it, and you find in the latter, latter part of verse number 8, the last two words it says, and they hid it. They found a great treasure that was the most valuable thing in this day which was food, raiment, gold, and silver. I mean, listen, they just, they just fell into the best of the best right there. For in that day, the city was perishing with famine. They found food. They found raiment. They found them some new clothes to put on. They also found gold and silver to be able to buy and trade and do what they need to for whatever else they need on top of the food and the raiment. Amen? So they got everything they need. They got their precious food. Now think of this on a spiritual matter because that's why God let us see this so we could use this in a spiritual thought and see that God's able to take care of us even in a time of famine and war. He can feed us and take care of us. Even the lepers folks that ain't supposed to be able to go into nobody's camp, they eaten. They got gold, silver, and new clothes. Leprous as folk ain't supposed to have those kind of things. Listen, honey, we're sinners saved by the grace of God. And uh, listen, we get provisions from God on a regular basis that we don't deserve. Amen. If you think you deserve it, you're in a different world than I'm in. I, I don't think I deserve anything. I didn't deserve salvation. God gave it to me because God loved me as a sinner that I might be saved. And he gave me Jesus, and I accepted Christ, and Christ saved my soul. Now i got a lot more than I ever deserved on top of salvation. Amen. So you see they've got provisions here. Now let's look at the provisions they're hiding. They're hiding precious food. You go to John chapter 6 and verse 33. Jesus says, For the bread of God is that which cometh down from heaven. And giveth life unto the world. So Jesus has taken the application of bread and the necessity of bread for the body and showing you that he came down from heaven to fulfill the necessity of the world, which is salvation. Amen. So he's showing you how important bread is to the body, so is he unto the soul. In John 6, 33. Jesus said, I am the bread of life in verse 35. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus says, I'm here to meet the very need of the people. Well, these lepers fellers has run into this camp, and they found the provisions that they need. They found the bread they needed. Have you found the bread you needed? Have you partook of the bread of life of the Lord Jesus Christ? You got your provisions. Hang on now, and we'll go somewhere with this. So they found the precious food. They found the profit of finances that they needed. And they found plenty of garments. They can put the right clothing on. See, Jesus talks to us about being robed in righteousness. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. They've got what they need. They got what they need for their soul. And they got what they need to put on. Soldiers put on battle array, battle garments, battle uh, attire. They put on their shields and their and their helmets and their their breastplates and all this. They put on, they got what they need for their soul, for their food, and they got what they need to put on their body. Ain't we got what the world needs? That's where I'm going, folks. I'm talking about uh, we do not well to sit here with having the the provisions and hiding them. If we got what we need and we got it, if you got bread you got the righteousness of Christ put on, then you've got exactly what this world needs in this time. 
You carry, if you're a saved person, you have more important things that you possess that you can give away than what the President of the United States has. With all the access he's got in this world, you have more of the provisions needed for this world than what the President with all his power contains right now. The souls among us, lost and undone and on their way to hell, there's people that we meet, there's people that we talk to, there's people in our families that are lost and dying and going to hell, and we have the very provisions that they need to keep them alive, to give them life. Amen? Well, we do not well by hiding the provisions that's necessary for them. Sometimes we have trouble sharing it. We're a little nervous. We're a little shy. We're a little scared of how we'll be received. Do you think these guys here had that? Yeah, they did. They were a little scared about saying, hey, well, we go back and tell them we, we might get, in, we might get in, they're not going to believe us and we might get in trouble and, and different things. But they said, wait a minute. We do not well by sitting here with these provisions and those people won't die. So we ought to take forth what God's give us what, what, this is a total gift, isn't it? We should take what God's given us rather than hiding the provisions that's needed for this world and we need to carry it forth. That's why we're live on the internet tonight so that folks can be at home if, in their safety. If that's the way they feel they need to be, uh, they can be at home in their safety and they can watch the broadcast. They can hear us as we preach the word of God and tell them about Jesus Christ, he is the bread of life. If they need salvation, Christ has it. Amen. We ain't going to hide it. Amen. So there's the hiding of the provisions, the precious food, the profit of finance, the plenty of garments, pardon and forgiveness. What folks need today is pardon and forgiveness. They need the forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon that he only can give them in the crimes committed against God Almighty. That's what a pardon's about. A pardon is issued to folks committed, that have committed crimes. Every person that's ever sinned has committed a crime against God. They, they, need, they need a pardon from Christ. Amen. That crime needs to be covered. That crime needs to be paid for. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the one that issues the pardons for us. Amen. So, holding of the provisions. Uh, or the hiding of the provisions and the holding of our peace. And they, they say there in verse number 9, he says one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. Now what's that tie to? That ties to something of the New Testament, doesn't it? It's called the gospel. When they come forth telling of Jesus Christ, the Savior is born unto us, they said we come with good tidings. That's the gospel. Here these guys has got good tidings and they're sitting there. They're sitting there with good tidings. He says, and we hold our peace. We ought to be telling folks. There's the halting of, uh, the holding of our, our peace. We ought, to, we ought to let other folks know we've got what we need. We ought to publish it abroad. We ought to, we ought to go tell others. Luke 8, 39 says, Return unto thy house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Have we forgotten how great it is that we're saved? Have we gotten to the place in life that we're so comfortable and so complacent with it that we forgot to tell others how great it is to be saved? Have we got over the joy of salvation? You know, preacher, preacher asked folks to identify that they've been saved by the grace of God and they're a little slow and, okay, me too. Beg, plead, and pull sometimes for testimonies and folks are a little, well, we, honey, we ought to be excited about salvation. We ought to be thankful. We need to remind ourselves every day that we've accepted Christ and we're saved by the grace of God. We got a home in heaven. We've been pardoned and forgiven of all our sins. I mean, we ought to keep that excited, excitement stirred up inside of us. We ought to be ever excited about being saved by the grace of God. I can't go to hell. There's no way possible for me to go to hell. 
I can't be bad enough or ugly enough now to go to hell. I'm saved, sealed, and on my way to heaven because of Jesus Christ. That all excite us a little bit. Amen. And regardless of what road I go down, what valley I have to trod, what problems I have to live through, I've got Jesus to be there with me. Amen. We ought to be excited. We ought to publish it. We ought to let others know. We ought to praise the Lord. You know, Jesus told a crowd that they was going to forfeit their place in praise if they didn't praise him. In Luke 19, 40, he answered and says unto them, I tell you that if these hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. So if you don't praise God, the stones will. Luke 19, 40. If you won't cry out and praise the Lord for what he's done for you, the stones will. That's sad, isn't it? Isn't that sad that God's got confidence in a rock and can get more praise out of a rock than a person that's been saved by the grace of God? Amen. Forevermore. I mean, I'm saved forever. Ain't nothing or nobody can change it. God himself can't change it. Don't look at me funny. God can't change it. Because if he did, he would cease to be faithful. He would cease to be truthful. Because he promised me he'd give me everlasting life. He'd have to back up on his promise and God can't do that. Therefore, God can't change it. You learned something, didn't you? See, a lot of things God can't do. God can't lie. And he can't back up on his promise that he's already executed because then it would be a lie. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do something. And if he ever changes, he backs up on that thing. See, it's different. Say, amen. Amen. I, I ain't got to worry about losing my salvation. No sin, no Satan, no person can change my salvation. And God wouldn't change it anyway. See, God already knows when he saved me who I was and what I'd be. God already knowed how good of a Christian I'd be or how sorry a Christian I'd be. God knowed my, my tries, my efforts, my, my best doings, and he also knowed my failures. And he saved me anyway. Amen. amen. I don't know if that's helping you, but that's helping me. Thank God I'm saved, amen. And we ought to shout it from the rooftop. We ought to let other folks know, hey, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, and you can too. Amen. If we hold our peace, we sit still here. Think about the folks that could die and go to hell. There was a city there that would have starved to death had those four sat right where he's at. We do not well if we hold our peace. We need to tell others. Amen. Old Paul and Silas sitting in prison in Acts 16, they got to telling it, got to singing the songs, got to singing the hymns. Hey, listen, they got to praising God in the jail, and it shook the foundations. Maybe sometimes, hey, we need to break up some of this monotony. We need to break a stronghold of Satan. Hey, listen, I'll tell you how you can do that. You can do that by praising the Lord. Amen? Shout a little bit every once in a while. Give him glory. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Psalm 150, verse 6. Amen? You breathing. You ought to praise him. Amen? Hey, did you know, I've told you this before, but let me remind you, it'll bring fear to the enemy when you praise the Lord. You go to 1 Samuel chapter 4 and you'll find where that they had got the Ark of the Covenant into the camp of Israel. And they began to praise the Lord and the Philistines were fearful, fearful of that because they heard, heard the noise of the shout because the Ark of the Covenant had come back. The presence of the Lord had come back in amongst his people and it brought fear to the Philistines, the enemy of God's people. Amen. You'll be enemy bothering you. You'll shake him up a little bit. Shout a little while. That'll stir a crowd up. That'll get them, gotta get them wondering and worrying. Amen. The enemy don't know what to think. You go to shout and praising God. Amen. Reckon what that crowd thought inside Jer Jericho uh, when the uh, Israelites just walking around out there. They just thinking, man, this is easy pickings. Here, we're going to just throw an arrow in them just in a minute. And about that time, God said, all right, J Joshua, tell them to shout. And they shouted and the walls fell down. You get victory over shouting. Y'all hearing me? 
Amen. Shout every once in a while. Praise the Lord. Give him glory. Let the fruit of our lips be praised continually unto the Lord. Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. But then you think about the halt in their place. It's a twofold problem in this if they stay where they are. If they, if they hide the provisions or hold their peace, there's, there's a twofold problem that comes out of that by them halting in their place. But I'm not getting out nowhere, but I'm not getting the word to the others that there's help, there's hope. By them not doing that, there's twofold problem. One of them is punishment. If you look at what they said there, some mischief, verse number nine, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore, come that we may go and tell the king. They knew that if they sat there, there was going to be a punishment for them not going and doing what they need to do. Ezekiel 33 verse 6 says this, But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. That's the verse that I use many times to talk about the blood that will drip from our fingers when we stand at the great white throne judgment. And we stand there, we see, and we, we, we realize these folks that, that we failed to warn, that we failed to tell them the truth about the gospel. We failed to tell them the truth of God's word. Hey, listen, if we don't warn them, their blood's going to be on our hands. Ain't that something horrible to think about? the people that we've failed to warn, the people we've failed to tell the truth about, uh, the Word of God, too, the, that we failed to share them, the truth of God's Word. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, I know you'll be all right. No, if they ain't saved, they ain't all right. They're going to go to hell. If they didn't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the only one that can pardon or wash away their sins, if they don't accept Jesus Christ, they go to hell. It ain't going to be all right. We do not well because there be a punishment for us halting in our place. You, you think about, you think the barrenness of prayer that we'll have because God's commanded us to go forth. If we don't do so, if we don't praise him, if we don't publish the gospel, then we've got sin in our life because God said do so. If we don't do so, it's a sin. Amen? God says do something. You don't do it. It's a sin. Jeremiah chapter 14, <clears throat> let me read this verse here to us tonight because a lot of folks has the impression that they can just do whatever and God hears them. There's many other verses, many other places, but let me, let me take you here because this shows you a very religious activity going on and God said, mm -mm. John 14, 10 says this, Thus saith the Lord unto the people, Thus have I loved, thus have they loved to wander and have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord doth not accept them. He will not remember, he will now remember their iniquity and visit their sin. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, is that, it's, isn't that a religious activity? When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offering and an oblations, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. There's a time, folks, that folks can go to such a degree that God will not answer your prayer. People don't want to hear that. People want to think, well, I, all I got to do is pray. No, there's a time. You can go so far sometime with God. Y'all remember old uh, 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 J. Harold Smith, I believe it was, preached God's three deadlines. You can cross God's deadlines. You can go so far with something that God says, mm -mm, I ain't hearing you this time. God said, I'll laugh at their calamity in another place in Jeremiah. But here he's talking about even though they fast and they offer the burnt out offerings and they go through all the religious sacraments that's there to be done. God said, no. Pestilence is coming and the swords are coming. You can't go so far. 
So that deals a little bit with the punishment if we halt in our place. But then think about the perishing of Samaria. If, if they did not tell the king in Samaria, if they did not share the word in Samaria, if they didn't tell those folks that, hey, there's food, there's raiment, there's gold, there's our provisions, if they didn't tell them, they would have perished. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. You've got it. You save. You're going to heaven. No worry, no danger. Everything's all right for you. But what about those that don't? What about the provisions that we hold? What about the provisions that we've got? Are we hiding them under a bushel? No. We're going to let them shine. All over Statesville, we're going to let our light shine, right? Not hide it, but let it shine. Let's not hide the provisions. Let's not hold our peace. Let's not halt in our place, but let us. May God help us to get the word out and tell others the hope that they need is in Jesus Christ. Problems all around the world. And the hope and the help that folks need is in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God help us to get it out there. At least they perish. If they perish, they'll die and go to a devil's hell forevermore. And their blood will be on our hands. I don't want that. I don't want that. God help me. May God help me to get the word out like I'm supposed to and can. I hope you have that same prayer tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I ask you to forgive us where we fail you. I ask you, Father, you'll forgive us where we come short, where we fail to get the gospel out, where we fail to share, where we fail to praise you as you so deserve. Father, there's lost folks about us. Lord, they're in famine. They're dying, and we have the provisions that's necessary for their life. Please help us to get it to them. Help us to have the concern. Help us to have the heart. Help us to have the burden. Do what's needed in our souls that we might be the witness that we can and that we should be in these days. Touch Tabernacle Baptist Church. Set us on fire for you that we might glow, that we might shine the light of the gospel to a desperate and a dark world. I ask you tonight, Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You mind the Lord.